Yes. Love it. Special. Mm -hmm. So child's pose, please, as really just a way to like start to get into your body, use your breath to land a little bit more presently in your body. You want to breathe exclusively through your nose because that helps the production of nitric oxide, which is very valuable for the body. So I've been telling a lot of my students recently, if there's one thing that you learn from me in your time studying with me, just let it be to breathe through your nose as much as possible. When you're sleeping, when you're awake, when you're doing yoga, you could even test it when you're exercising. It will be harder. And I'm not saying like make yourself pass out, you know, because you're trying so hard, but the health benefits are really quite extraordinary. To also start to cultivate the sense of ujjayi breath constricting through the back of your throat. And I love to just use the first series of breaths when I land in a posture, especially in the beginning of my practice to kind of treat it as a diagnostic assessment for my body. So I just jumped down into the child's pose. It's my first one of the day. I feel some sensation around my low back, maybe from the dancing I was doing yesterday. But almost like you're taking inventory, taking stock here. And that's all we're really doing over the course of the next 40 minutes or so is taking stock of sensation that we experience in the body as we change form. And this gets into the witness consciousness again of like, well, we're seated in the self witnessing the self. Slowly start to roll your body up so that you're seated on your heels now. And if you're not comfortable seated like this, you can take a block underneath your hips and, and do it like this and interlace your hands and just start to move your wrists like this. We call this magnetic wrists. Oh no, we call this wrist rolled. Sorry. You clasp your hands together at chest height, fingers are intertwined and you roll one hand over the top of the other taking the top hand into wrist flexion and pronation while the base hand moves into extension and supination. So I'll just keep going, but basically the top hand is in flexion, flex, right? And the other hand is in extension. And you're trying to kind of roll out the entire time. One of the words that they were teaching us in animal flow was tensegrity. And tensegrity is the idea that the tension forms from opposing forces, really. You get a tension line from opposing forces. So how can you feel the opposing forces of the wrists here? Good, now we're gonna go into what's called wrist waves. And this is interesting. Your fingers are interlaced at chest height, palms are down, elbows directly out to the sides. And you allow the elbow to lift as you transfer the wave from one hand to the next. And basically one hand is pushing, the other is pulling. And you make a wave. You allow the lift of the wrist to transfer through the knuckles onto the opposite hand. And then change the direction, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. Pull. The dogs are doing good so far. I'm proud of them. Okay, lateral wrists. Keep your hands in a lace like this and you move them away from your body like that. And what you're gonna notice feels so awesome. You feel it right here. So keep your palms facing straight down. There you go. That way you get the lateral flexion of the wrist. So in case anybody else, it's the difference between that 
and that. And you try to straighten the arms, move them away from you. That will stretch this out. Our wrists are so important. Mobility, it's, I think wrists are really one of those parts of the body that it's like we didn't realize how important it was until it got injured and we can't use it. <laughs> that happens a lot. Okay, now you're gonna come onto your um, hands and knees and let's first take the palms like this. You have your fingers back towards your knees. Hi, Luna. Hi, you're so sweet. And we're gonna do what's called uh, wrist rocks. And what that is, is you rock forward and back. You're in this kneeling position. You've got your palms on the ground, fingers facing back towards your knees. And you're gently rocking forward and back, allowing the shoulders to move behind the wrists. And that intensifies the stretch sensation through the forearm extensors. And then you return to the starting position. When the dogs like come engage with me like that, I just try to like act like an animal. And then they, they keep going. <laughs> okay, good. Now you go the other way. You take the backs of your hands to the ground and you're gonna do wrist rocks again. Ooh. We're warming up the wrists because we're gonna use them a lot as we go through some of these um, animal flow postures. So I've got two more for you. This time, if you want, we're just gonna keep warming up different parts of the body. Tuck your toes and sit back onto your heels. And then as you do that, try to make your toes as wide as possible. Ooh. And imagine that you have like toe spacers in between each of your toes. This one is called magnetic wrists. And basically, you bring the hands to shoulder height, the base of the hands and wrists are touching, wrists and fingers are extended, and you begin to pronate through the forearms. That's not entirely important, you know what that means. Bring the base thumbs together, allow them to transition through the hands. You continue this motion, and the magnet is really at the wrists. Good. If you're not feeling this in your wrists at this point, you're doing something wrong. So just let me know if you have questions and come back the other way. You might be waking up the intrinsic muscles of your feet as well while you're here. Last position is wrist relief. We just do this and you lift, wait, what do you do? Press backs of hands and fingers together around umbilicus height. Flex elbows down, that's what it is. So elbows go down, draw the hands up to elbow height or above. Maintain full contact with the backs of the hands as the elbows peel down and decrease the degree, decrease, increasing the degree of flexion at the wrist. Good, really good. Don't get lazy about pressing the backs of the hands and fingers together. That will be the thing I think that probably slips away for a lot of us. Okay, awesome, you guys. Come to tabletop position. And why don't you just warm up with a couple of cat cows before we move into some of these animal flow postures. I'd be curious to hear what you think about this core engagement for the static beast that we're about to do, Maddie. I've really been doing these beast poses more as planks. Like I've, I've replaced plank with beast. If you wanna go side to side, you can. And if you want circles, you can. Keep pressing the metacarpals and the fingertips down. All right, so we're gonna go into static beast activation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna read you these cues because I find it really helpful. They're all points of alignment. And it's also good practice for me. Hi, Luna. So hands are shoulder width, fingers forward. Check. Knees and feet are shoulder width. Check. 
knees come in front of the hip line. So the cue I use for this is that you try to bring the knees in, in the same line as the belly button. So if you had a pipe that was going straight down from the belly button, it would line up with the knees. Ankles are dorsiflexed, toes tucked. So flex your ankles and tuck your toes. Spine is neutral. So that means you first anterior tilt, posterior tilt until you find the midpoint. And then you do a similar thing with the protraction and retraction of the upper body, the scapula set at the midpoint. And that's a midpoint between protraction and retraction. So set the midpoint, corkscrew the arms. So your arms exter externally rotate. I always do that to give you guys the example, but your fingers don't actually move. I lit up. Yes, I like when you lift my face. Eyes down, neck long. Mouth closed, jaw relaxed, and tongue on the roof of the mouth. All right, so even this should be work here. Just maintaining midpoint of scapula, midpoint of pelvis, pressing heels back, toes are tucked, corkscrewing arms. And then when you're ready, the knees float one inch off the ground. Draw your belly button in, hug the side waist in, and set near beast here. Now try to maintain perfect beast alignment and lift your left lower leg only high enough to slide a piece of paper under the toes. Keep the ankle in dorsiflexion. Good, set that down. And lift the right foot only enough to slide a piece of paper underneath. Maintain your perfect beast alignment here. Press out through the back of the left heel. Set it down. Good, set your knees down and come back to your child's pose. Bend at your arms, tuck a prayer back behind your head. So that's beast, static beast with a single limb lift of the lower body. I really feel that. I don't know if you also really feel it, but I'm gonna assume that you do. And the, I want you to like inventory for where your trouble spots are and see where you can bring those spots more into integrity. So come back when you're ready. Set your static beast. You've got all these things, knees under belly button, corkscrew arms, spine neutral. We're gonna do the same thing. Keep the alignment, tuck your toes and lift your knees an inch. And then to lift the arms, all I want you to do is retract the scapula. So let's start on the right side retract and set down. Left side, retract and set down. Again, retract. And it should really only be enough to set a piece of paper underneath. Good, hold your beast. Knees only an inch off the ground. When you're ready, lift right hand, left foot. Set down, lift left hand, right foot. Sit down, right hand, left foot. Sit down, left hand, right foot. Set down, good, touch your, touch your knees down. Give yourself some wrist relief. Building some heat in the body. Should feel good. Should feel good in the arms, should feel good in the core. I also really feel this through my quads. We're gonna do two more beast things and then we'll move a little bit on our mats and I have another pose I wanna show you after that. But where I wanna go next is exactly what you just did. And when we trained in this, they basically had us go across the floor of the studio, traveling this. So everything that we just put in, I want you to do again and there's, two things about the traveling that to me make it very dynamic. The first is that you lift opposite limbs and set them down at the same time. And so just the matching, the coordinating of the hand and foot lifting and setting down at the same time is a lot for the neuromuscular intelligence. So that's your first thing. Second thing, is to do it as lightly as possible. 
And that's where you'll see, I'll just demonstrate here and really try to give yourself somewhere to go. So I'm gonna go all the way through into the kitchen there. Trying to do it very lightly and maintain all of this. Now, before you go, I'm just remembering a few things I need to tell you. Every time you set the arm down, it corkscrews. All right, so set corkscrew, set corkscrew. And that's just externally rotating the arm. So go ahead when you're ready, travel a distance. And then what would actually be great is if you could travel back. Watch that your butt doesn't lift up like this. Probably easier that way. Set down at the same time. Get very curious about your experience in your body. I mean, the strength required to do something just like this, you guys are already in like the top echelon of probably most Americans with the direction that health is heading in America, at least. So really good job, really good job. Finish up that round. And then I want you to come just back to the camera. We're gonna do one more traveling. This is the lateral travel. So you, the only difference here is that you have your arms together like this, your hands together on the ground like so. So they're totally touching. Let me move back a little bit. There we go. Um, start with your hands together, knees wide. And the direction of travel that we're gonna move in is towards the right. So we're gonna be laterally traveling and first towards the right. So when I say same side, that means the direction that we're going in. So what I want you to do when you're ready is open your same side arm, open your right arm and close your left leg. Boom. And then open your same side lower limb, close your opposite side upper limb. Boom, and you should be back, exactly. Hands together, knees apart. Open right, close left. Open right, close left. But you transfer to the lower body, upper body, right? So that's your pattern. Try to go back. I'm keeping my knees down right now. And I'm sure you know what the next step is. But even with the knees down, can you lift lightly and set down at the same time? Very, very good for the brain. The brain-body connection. Neuromuscular intelligence. Okay, so when you're ready, lift your knees just an inch. You see that? See how smooth it is? I'm trying to make it very set, like an animal. Fingers stay together. The temptation will be to lift the hips. Keep them down as best as possible. Good, and then set down when you're ready. Give yourself some wrist relief if you want. And then actually we're gonna go into a downward facing dog. Just stretch out that whole back chain of the body. It should feel really nice. Press your shoulders to your ears because you're engaging the upper fibers of your trapezius to elevate your scapula. Press the backs of your legs apart because you're activating your abductors, your outer hip muscles, to ultimately then spiral the thighs also inward. That's a very refined motion. I think each of you can probably do that though. You press the backs of the legs apart to facilitate a rolling of the inner thighs away from the face. So you're wrapping your outer thighs towards your face, inner thighs away from the face. Corks through the arms but continue to drive the base knuckle of your index finger into the earth of either hand. That should help you find a really nice wrapping sensation of the whole upper arm bone that travels all the way down into the hands. Three more deep breaths in here through the nose. And you take stock, you inventory, the sensation of your body as you change form. The purposes of that is because we're trying to have the most sustainable experience we can while we're here. 
Walk the hands back to the feet. Uttanasana, forward fold, 10 breaths. Nod your head yes, shake your head no, whatever you need to do here. Honestly, we'll probably spend even more than 10 breaths here. Forward fold is extraordinarily beneficial. Breathe through the entire back chain of your body, upper body and lower body, including the back of your neck. You can find a very similar action that we found in our downward facing dog of pressing the backs of the legs apart to activate your outer hip muscles, lift your quadriceps, and then spin your inner thighs away from your face. Once you find the, that spiral of the legs in forward fold, there's no turning back because it just becomes so dynamic. There's so much to be with. And then that becomes automated, that becomes integrated. And then you're just, you're strong, so beautiful. Soften your knees, roll up one vertebra at a time. Take your shoulders to the ears, back in space, down the back and forward. Ears, back in space, down the back and forward. Up, back, down, forward, up, back, down, forward. Reverse it now to back, up, down, Ooh, back up, forward, down, <laughs> back up, forward, down. And what I really want you to realize here is that you're actually not moving your shoulders. You're moving your scapula. So your scapula are like your shoulder blades, these kind of wing-like bones that exist in the back of your ribs. And it's that activation. We could talk about the muscles that are involved for each of them if you're remotely interested. It's upper fibers of the trapezius, rhomboids, lats and serratus anterior. So smooth this out, take a couple more shoulder rolls in either direction. And let's get into the neck while we're here. So just trace your chin across the chest and drop your ear from side to side. And what I would really do here is once again, just start to inventory for where you notice sensation as you shift form. And then like open up a dialogue with that sensation. Say, maybe I need to stay here a little bit. Oh, what is this, <laughs> right? What happens if you start to just tilt your head back slightly into extension, for example? And all I'm doing is like letting the sensation guide me into where I need to stay and be. So I'll leave some space for this. Try to get some breaths on each side. And like what I'm just exploring right now is the connection of the jaw. Ooh. Just inventorying here. Probably about five more breaths. Some of you will want to inventory the backspace a little bit. And as I do that, I like to keep my teeth clenched. And open up some of the, the muscles here. It's all just like muscle tissue right, and fascia and skin tissue. We're trying to get into the tissues of the body here. All right, when you're ready, fingers, fingers, feet all the way together like so. 
And then eventually, yes, fingers together. Come into Agni Mudra. So that means your finger is extended like this. Hug the belly in and up. Elevate the shoulders. I can touch my ceiling if I do this. See how my, my arms are like really back here, but not really there as best as possible. And you're gonna go up and over to the right. I'm not mirroring you. So just go whatever way you go. Hug your belly in. And there's some effort of the contraction of these obliques. So make this like a big abdominal side crunch in a way while you find length through the opposite side body. Like there's a big beach ball or balloon puffing you up under here. If the two arms up is too much, you can always come here. But when you're ready, inhale up. Woo! Exhale, it's cactus, heart lifts. Inhale, stretch. When I cactus, I'm in retraction. And then we come to elevation. Exhale, retract. Retract and depress, kind of. Inhale, stretch. Elevate. Last time, stretch. Press the backs of your legs to part. Interlace your hands the other way. So the opposite finger is on top. Opposite pinky. When you're ready, start with the core integration. So wrap, pull belly button in and up, and then go over. See, I feel like this, oh, it's easier to do that. <laughs> Offload some of the weight or put the weight aligned with the joint alignment. So that way there's more to bear. Support with the left obliques here. Open up to the whole right chain of the body. Can you use your left hand to support your right one? You're almost pushing up into that hand as much as you're reaching long through the right arm. Let's take two more breaths. Inhale, come up. Woohoo! This time, exhale, cactus, retract. And on the opposite breath, do this round and this is pronation. Exhale, retract. It's not pronation, what am I saying? Protraction. Mm. So this is the difference between these two that we're doing. I'm bringing it a little bit into the pelvis. I'd actually invite you to try to keep the pelvis fairly still here. Good, inhale, lift up. Exhale, bow over your legs. If I'm correct, I have you at the back of your mat. So walk out to a downward facing dog. Let's inhale, come forward. Plank pose here. Try to feel like an element of beast in your plank pose. Can you drive your metacarpals and fingertips into the ground and corkscrew your arms while you're here? And one of the things that that corkscrewing of the arms, it originates from the protraction of the shoulders. That's kind of cool, right? So from this, you're also corkscrewing. You've got these beautiful opposing forces working together. Hug the belly in and up. How long can you hold plank? Can you let that be something that you're proud of? Your strength, your mobility. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, touch your knees down. Watch this. I'm just gonna flip my feet like so. And then I'm gonna go through the whole rhythm of the shoulders up. And as the heart dips, I peel them back. Let me face you a little bit more for that. So I, I undid the legs. I lifted the shoulders. And I kind of emerged into the cobra, beautiful. Try to dig the index finger of either hand down into the ground and course through the arms. Feel the broadness across your chest. Good, deep breath in. Exhale, child's pose. Really good, you guys.
All right, I want to come to a pose called crab. Crab is really fun. <laughs> so roll up when you're ready and you're going to come to sit, sit like this. So if you want to watch a little bit, you can, or I think you should just do it with me. You make your body into the, the letter, what do I want to say? The shape of the capital letter M. So that's a little better for me. See how I had to, I was two here. It's actually a good way to start is to slide your hips forward and back until you find that midpoint. Notice your wrists here. If this is too much, you can turn them out a little bit. Find the midpoint, here we go. Hands shoulder width or slightly wider, externally rotated from the shoulders. So we've been, that's corkscrew in the arms, right? Even though they're in a different orientation. Hi, Luna, you're back. Hi, hi. You like crab? Okay, so <laughs> your knees are bent, feet are hip width distance. The hip position is halfway between the hands and feet. I already said that. Here we go. Spread the toes, grip the ground with your feet. And here's how you lift your hips up off the ground for this one. You depress the scapula. So could you do it before I even show it? If you depress the scapula, your hips lift an inch off the ground and hold. Retract the head now. And so what this looks like is you bring it back and you give yourself a double chin and you look to the horizon line. And this is your crab pose. All right. Maintain perfect crab alignment and lift your lower right leg high enough just to slide a piece of paper underneath and sit down. Left hand just enough. Keep the ankle in dorsiflexion. So I'm still doing that, flexing through my ankle. Set it down. Good. To get your to get your arm up. Hey, 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 hey. It's okay. You're gonna elevate your scapula first of the right arm. And then come back. And try not to shift side to side as best as possible. And then come back. All right, so sit down, give yourself a little relief here. Whew. So that's crab. I think crab is really fun. We're gonna um, travel it just a little bit, but see how we're working very much the difference between front body and back body here. So we're in a totally different orientation now. Really have just flipped it 180. Once you start to master crab and beast, especially with these opposite arm and leg limb lifts, you start to be able to switch it which gets really fun. We're not gonna do that today, but um, I wanna build the fundamentals here. So come back when you're ready. What we're gonna do is we're going to lift opposite limbs when we're ready. So set up here, do everything that you did on the first time. Slide hips forward, back. I think that position of the head is very important. Eyes on the horizon. I can actually see a horizon line out my window. It's kind of cool. Hips just one inch off the ground, because why? Because you depressed the scapula, Whew. all right? When you're ready, go ahead and lift, let's say right arm, left leg, go forward, set down and keep going. When you set down, you have to kind of re-corks through that arm and also move through like the elevation and depression of that shoulder blade. Good, go back. Good. See how the arm rotation is very important as you do this. Good, sit down, roll out a little bit. I'm only gonna give you one more thing with this. Um, so I apologize if you find this tedious. It is very good for building strength and mobility. But I want you to really think about the articulation of your foot as you're traveling this time. So watch, when I go forward, I walk with heel to full foot, and then I roll the toes down. Finger, uh, the hands go fingers to full hand. Fingers to full hand. And when I go back, it's basically the reverse. Boom. Base of palm to full hand and toes to full foot. All right, so think about that as you travel this next time. Give yourself just a few more passes. 
hand and foot land at the same time. And you're really trying to pull with the foot and push with the hand. Last thing as you're doing this, I want you to think with your arms, lift, land, and lock. And that locking is of the scapula. Boom, boom. Lift, land, and lock. Lift, land, and lock. You see that locking I'm talking about? Lift, land, and lock. Here it comes on the right side. Lift, land, and lock. Very good, set it down. Let's take a forward fold, Hashimotanasana. If you want, you can have blocks underneath your knees. Flex your feet back towards, really it's like your toes are pulling back towards your knees, but you wanna roll the inner foot away from the hips. Roll the shoulders a little bit. And then set them where you'd like them to be. Try to keep some integrity in your spine here. Pull with your arms, lift the heart, press the backs of the legs apart. Oh my gosh, Kelsey, I just thought of something I wanted to ask you. Remind me after class. Keep your side body long. And then release everything to slowly start to roll up one vertebra at a time. All right, Maddie, here we go. Once you get to lifted, kind of keep going back and try to hinge from here. Draw your legs in, hug your knees together. And maybe it's just here, but I want you to really hug your knees together. And what that might do is make you feel your outer hips more. If you're gonna lift, try to keep your knees together. Maybe a block in between the knees if you really want. Woo! If anybody wants to lengthen out the legs, you can. Try to keep the feet flexed and you're trying to move your heart and your chest together here. That can also be done here. All right, when you're ready, twist a little bit. Like you're almost gonna come into a side crow and come back and twist, come back twist. It's going to also be done here. I'm serious. It's still a very good core workout, squeezing that block and getting the twist with the feet down. All right. When you're ready, come down to your back, hug your two knees into your chest, roll them a little bit, circle them, and then go the other way. Send your legs straight up to the sky. Belly button to spine, curl your whole thoracic spine off the ground. So that's your whole rib cage. You're trying to lift the rib cage off the ground here by hugging your belly button in and up. Hollow your front body, reach to touch your toes. And then watch this, point through your feet, but only pull your toes back towards your fingers, straighten your legs and spiral your thighs away from your face. So your inner thighs away from the face. Internal rotation. Good, try to touch the toes. But the balls of the feet are reaching away. The toes are pulling back. Five, four, three, two, one. Release, hug knees to chest. Really good. Should we do one more? One more, why not? It'll make us all the more glad that we did it later on. Such a theme in like not only yogic practices, but definitely spiritual traditions, religious order, is that we sacrifice the present for the future. We sacrifice it now so that the future will be more enjoyable. So interlace your hands behind your head. Let's take both legs high again, like we just did. Try to get your whole thoracic rib cage off the ground, hug your belly in and up. Keep your right leg exactly where it is, but lengthen your left leg so the heel floats an inch off the ground. And then switch. And switch. 
Try to cross your inner thighs as you switch. If you need the legs to be bent, you can do something like that. Five, four, three, two, one, plus one more, because it's an even number, and hug your knees to your chest. Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. Put your feet on the ground, outer edges of the feet parallel to the outer edges of the mat, press into your inner heels to lift your hips, bridge pose. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, pick it up. Exhale, set it down. Maybe you experiment with keeping that anterior tilt and just touching the sacrum down and lifting back up. So you maintain your natural low back curvature the whole time. Don't neglect your upper body in this. Press your shoulders down, outer upper arms down to get the heart closer to the face. Next time the hips are lifted, stay. And if you want, deepen it by walking one elbow under. And by elbow, I mean shoulder. And then the next, clasping your hands. And then you really have an opportunity to press into the full length of the arm if the arms are extended underneath the body. Try to move your hips towards your knees, your heart towards your face. You're splitting in two. Squeeze the glutes, but also press into your inner heels. So that way you don't splay the knees outward. And deep breath in and exhale lower. Cactus the arms and sway the knees from side to side. I think one of the cool things about you know, being a human is we can see something we want and we can manifest it, we can go get it. And, and a lot of times the seeing of the thing is seeing for potential. So we see what isn't already. For example, if you want like a strong butt, so you don't have a strong butt, you want one. Well, there's a very prescribed way to go about getting that. Okay, keep your knees off to the right and keep the back of your left shoulder heavy. What's the prescribed way of getting a strong butt? Um, do some squats, go for a run, learn what muscles are there and how you strengthen them. But there's a way to do it. You know, I'm always trying to make links and connections. And so if we want to do that back to the conversation we were having before class, basically is like, if you want to be, you know, whether it's enlightened, self-actualized, fully realized. If you have some sort of deeper spiritual desire to be held, there is a prescribed way of getting there. It's, it's a question of how, how well you follow it in a way and how you use your own discernment along that path so that you can see where you're committing your energy to and where you're getting good return on investment for that. Come the other way. So knees drop off to the left, heavy the back of your right shoulder. And I hope you guys know that when I talk about return on investment, I'm not just talking about like dollar value. Think about the energy, the value of energy, the quality of your experience, the lifestyle. And a big part of what we're trying to do here is just raise awareness around what causes what. And a big part of the journey is understanding that some of what causes what is out of your hands and out of your control. So the biggest and arguably bigger part about the whole journey is realizing what you can't control in terms of what you can. Okay, so here's what I'm feeling in my body to kind of keep my left leg where it is in the external rotation and to just roll my right leg out, readjust the pelvis and slowly walk the feet together for kind of a Baddha Konasana, a Supta Baddha Konasana. If you feel like that's too much on your, your hips or your low back or your knees, just come into Shavasana. I'm feeling just like very open right now with cactus in the arms. 
And when you think about it, we've, we've done a lot of like one side of the body versus the other side of the body. Can you see how your body is sort of like in symmetry here? Almost like a butterfly. Hey, Max, Max. What about the two sides of your tongue? The two sides of your nose? Try to experience the sensation of your back body here. Really that the back body is plugged into the universal energy that organizes all of us. And as your back body is literally making contact with the earth right now, Take this opportunity to feel yourself becoming recharged. Like it's a pillow supporting you. When you're ready, you can start to deepen your breath and reintroduce some movement back into your body. Take your time. Really take your time as you roll over onto your side, whichever side you feel called to. Spending a breath or two there in the fetal position, recharging still, remembering. the familiarity of this position. As you slowly press your way up, make your way to your seat. And I just want you to feel that like back body 
it's, I don't know, it's like a wall of energy that you can kind of lean back into. Take even the chin slightly back, plug into the universal energy of the back body. See if you can receive from it. So there's this concept that the front of your body is your individual. It's more of the, the ego self with the defining characteristics of your face and these things that make us more signaturely identifiable. But the back body is the universal collective. So could you just lengthen your posture a little bit and plug in to the pillar of support, universal support that exists from the posterior. And then channel that energy through the sound of Om with me if you'd like. Inhale. Oh. Namaste. The dogs did pretty good considering how they can be. <laughs> so thanks for practicing today. That was a fun practice, fun convo.